I'm Peter Block here at TCT, and this is a quick wrap-up of the first two days of TCT. With me on my left is Deepak Bhatt, an old friend from the Brigham and Women's Hospital and an expert in clinical trials. Deepak, we have three major trials, I think, that are important to talk about. We have COAPT, which is the big blockbuster right. here, no question about that. Uh, Solve TAVI, which I'm going to ask you about in just a second, and sure. Pad N5, which is an interesting pulmonary hypertension trial. But let's start with COAPT, the big trial of this uh, meeting, no question, mitral uh, clip against medical therapy in patients who have severe mitral regurgitation. We've had other trials that have tested this, particularly in Europe, Deepak. Yeah, and that was surprisingly negative. So the expectation of many people coming into this meeting is, well, this is going to be negative too. And certainly if one looks at the surgical literature, surgery for functional MR doesn't look that good. In fact, those patients do pretty poorly with surgery. So the expectations might have been sort of low coming into the trial, and that made the results even more yeah. wow. Well, the interesting results here have to do with the endpoints, because the endpoint was repeat hospitalization right. for heart failure. And at the very beginning, uh, I said to myself, that's a pretty cool endpoint, and I think they're going to make that one. And indeed, they did. Right. Uh, right. So there was a significant difference in recurrent hospitalization in these patients who had the clip compared to uh, major league uh, medical therapy. The interesting thing, from my point of view, is that death also oh, was yeah. reduced in patients that got the clip. And so you wonder what this really means. Well, it's hard to know exactly other than, you know, I'd rather be in the group that's still alive. So I think the trial is a home run, uh, really huge for MitraClip. Uh, and I think the mechanisms, you know, it might be like some of the drugs for heart failure that reduce hospitalization and also reduce death. I'm talking about like the SGLT2 inhibitors. So I, I guess in a well-done study, something that has a profound effect on reducing heart failure hospitalization should also translate into reductions in death. I looked very hard at uh, the subgroup analyses, and interestingly, in COAPT, patients who were very sick, really bad New York Heart Association class, bad ejection fractions and so forth, did not seem to do any better with the CLIP versus medical therapy. But the patients who were less sick, uh, they seem to be the ones that benefit. So yeah, the message may be start early. Yeah, you probably have to get to them before the LV is yeah. blown. I mean, yeah. at that point, probably nothing will do the trick. But yeah, I, I thought the results were really strong. Yeah, I did too. And positive trial. Uh, one issue that's going to be raised is who should do the mitral clip because huh. it's not an easy procedure. No, it can be quite time consuming, yeah. especially if one is not uh, really high volume. Okay, let's move on. Solve tabby. Yeah, I thought that was a really interesting trial, too, something that we need, well-done head-to-head trials comparing the self-expanding TAVR valve to the balloon-expandable one. And, uh, you know, modest sample size, a bit over 400 or so patients, uh, if I remember right, and uh, asking an important question, you know, which valve is better or um, is, is one worse? Are they non-inferior? And overall, for the primary endpoint, looking at different ischemic endpoints, looking at uh, regurgitation, pacemaker implantation, virtually identical rates. So overall, one could say primary endpoint, they perform pretty well and pretty similarly. I agree with that entirely. The stroke issue, though, is a little bit of a burr under the saddle. Right. It is. So the self-expanding valve had a significantly lower rate of stroke than the balloon expandable, which you know, was like 4% versus 0.5%. Yeah. So it, not only is it a difference, it seems, relatively speaking, like a, a larger difference than what I feel is the case in clinical practice. But you know, that's why we do trials. Maybe it's real. I, I think it will need to be evaluated again in a larger trial. It should be evaluated again in a larger trial. Might be true with you know post-dilations. Maybe that's what's getting folks into trouble with the balloon expandable valves. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, everybody thinks the same thing. You know, if you put a balloon in an aortic valve, it, it ain't so great for you, right? But yeah. on the other hand, I think we just don't know. That may be a play of chance. Uh, I think another trial is not going to be done. I'd be surprised. But maybe there'll be registries which will tell us more about this trial. Yeah, well, issue. you know, I, I think maybe another investigator-initiated trial will be done. I think it's unlikely yeah. that either a commercial um, a vendor for the valves would do a trial yeah. because you could lose. No yeah. one's going to take that chance. But I think a, a well-powered investigator-initiated trial could nail yeah. this question. That would be very important. Okay, and lastly, PAD N5. That's yeah. an interesting Chinese study from pulmonary hypertension, PAD N5 tested denervation in the pulmonary artery with a sham control, which is sort of cool, and I think makes the data much more compelling. I agree with you. I mean, I was trying to find some, you know, 
real hole in the study to, to take it down, but I, I couldn't, at least on a rather quick review of things. And uh, I mean, the six minute walk distance was a lot better with the pulmonary denervation. The hemodynamic parameters uh, for the most part were better PVR I'm talking about. So uh, overall, it looked promising in a disease state where there's not a lot of great therapies. Obviously there's some drugs, but those patients tend to still do pretty poorly over the long haul. I agree. It's, I think my guess about this study is we need larger studies to really take a look at that. Of course, right. nobody's doing this in the United States because it's not reimbursed and not FDA approved, but it's something that we've got to find an answer for. Yeah, I agree. And uh, hopefully we'll get more data. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so that does it for day one and two.